Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. and this is not too back or not to back. I'm actually at Dice Tower West in Vegas at the moment, which means I did not have a chance to film too back or not to back because it requires a lot of time, effort, and energy. And so instead, today we have the 12 most expensive crowdfunding campaigns that I've ever backed. Basically, a few weeks ago, I did a video of like you know, kind of correlating my most, my favorite crowdfunding campaigns that I've backed, and then talking about how much I spent in those campaigns. And I had a few people say, "Hey, what are the most expensive crowdfunding campaigns you've backed?" And so I. I put together a list. These are going to be the first 12. Why 12 you ask? Because this is everything I've spent $500 or more on cumulatively. Meaning if you count all of them together, if you add up all in a specific line, a specific game, you'll see what I mean soon enough. If you add them all together, it's $500 or more, going from $500 on the low end up to $950 on the high end. Yes, I am aware that I said $500 and low end in the same sentence. I don't feel good about it either. If you want more of these, by the way, over on Patreon, I will have the next 12, because basically everything I spent $350 or more on will be on the next, those other 12 will be over on Patreon. Yes, I do have a Patreon for the low price of $2 a month. You can have access to a ton of content from schedules, from this, from that, from behind the scenes content to unfair and unbalanced way I convince you not to back crowdfunding campaigns. All of that is over on Patreon, also available if you decide to join as a YouTube member. So extra content for you all the time, like generally like at least one video a week, sometimes two, as well as schedules, pictures, all those things, and of course supporting the channel. Very much appreciated. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into these campaigns. 12 campaigns that I spent a lot of money on, and I'm going to talk about both the campaigns themselves, how I got that high, as well as, well, how I got that high would probably be why I spent that much money on them, not what I meant there, and then also, was it worth it or not, if they've delivered. Some of them have, some of them have not. I have thoughts, I have opinions, I have self-justification, ready, loads to go. Let's start off with the very first one, which is Freedom 5, a Sentinels comics board game. This is basically around $500. Now, for the record, by the way, going through this list, I have everything rounded to the nearest $50 from what I spent, and I generally counted shipping and taxes and all that stuff if it was easy to calculate. I try to calculate with the easiest thing I could uh, while trying to encompass as much as possible. Sometimes it's a little harder to find. You pay on Kickstarter, you do late pledge, then there's an extra thing that they release. I try to keep it easy. Round to the nearest $500. Freedom 5 coming in at $500. Uh, this is going to be the Sentinels Comics board game coming, coming, coming from Arcane Wonders, and this one looks cool. And I played it, and I know I like it, and I didn't plan on spending $500 on it either. This is a very cool game that is both going to be a lot on the table, giving you the feel of playing through a superhero game as you have tons of pre-painted miniatures and this is a game that I am I think that I I don't know what happened with this game. I don't know if this will stick around or not. I know that I liked the gameplay. I don't know if I liked the gameplay to the tune of $500 as far as what I enjoyed with this game. You are running around the board. You're controlling heroes. You're going through a sequence of stories. You're trying to be going through a pandemic-esque system where you clear the bad things off the board while trying to deal with the fact that more bad things are always coming and trying to outpace the game as you make your way to the end game. It has a IP I like, Sentinels of the Multiverse. It had great gameplay that I thoroughly enjoyed. And the only real question I have is ultimately, is this a $500 game for? me. And I'm skeptical on that. The quality, yes. The components, yes. The pre-painted miniatures, left, right, and center, and all the expansion add-ons, absolutely. Actually worth it as far as will I play it and table it and enjoy it enough. I mean, keep in mind, I'm someone who's currently loving The Loop. Like, The Loop is currently my go-to pandemic-esque style game. That's a $35 game with a few expansions. I've spent 50, 60 bucks on The Loop altogether. That is, and that's a game I'm really, really enjoying and that gives me that pandemic feel of keeping things off your table. So this is one that I'm not saying that I have regrets, but I'm not saying I won't have regrets, and I'm also saying that I, I'll sell it if I don't like it, so I'm not worried about regrets quite yet. But overall, this is one that I am excited for it to come, and I absolutely will give it the time to table, but I don't know if this is one that's going to be worth it for me overall. Then there we have Master of the Universe, the board game, Clash for Eternia, coming in at $500 as well. This is coming to you from Kaman, and it's one that I have no second thoughts about at all. I, I do have second thoughts about how much Kaman content I have in my game systems in general, but for me, this very much gave me the gameplay feeling of the World of Moloch Rise, the World of Smog Rise of Moloch, which is a gameplay system I thoroughly enjoy. But this gives it to you in a one-shot system, as opposed to the World of Smog, uh, the World of Moloch gives it to you in a you know six-campaign arc, which has made it a very hard game to table. I like the the World of Smog, the World of Moloch Rise of Smog, the World of 
the, ri the world of Smog Rise of Moloch. I like that game system, and the Master of the Universe felt like it very much carried over that DNA while giving you an absolute ton of content. Now, will I go through it all? I don't know. I mean, Lord knows I have mar massive darkness that I've barely touched, and I am like, super excited about to get that game, and I have barely touched it. But then there's other game systems that arrive that I do dive into, and it's sometimes the excitement I have for a game system does not always match whether or not I play it, or how often I play it, I should say, or how quickly I dive into it, but like, I'll have games like Vindication, which have showed up, and I love it, and I'm playing it a ton, and I'm really enjoying it. I have games like Ma Marvel United that I give a ton of table time, and I have Massive Darkness, which I want to give a ton of table time, but I haven't, and we have Masters of the Universe, the board game, Clash for Eternia, which is, again, I played this game, it felt like a game system that I love, it is a game system that I thoroughly enjoyed, it's an IP I don't really care about in theory, but I'm happy to have on my table, because it's different, it's interesting, my kids like it, they've watched the Netflix TV shows and all that stuff, and so this is one that I am not yet in any way regretting. I think it's one that's going to stick around for a while because of the fact that it's based on a system that I already know that I enjoy and it makes it more accessible. So overall, this one, no second thoughts on yet. Then we have ISS Vanguard coming in at $550 for this one. ISS Vanguard away from Waken Realms. This is giving you, well, well a, a giant immersive campaign experience with Wave 2 not even here yet. ISS Vanguard gives you a narrative experience that I have not do dove into the retail, not the retail, I have not dove into the final game yet. I played through this game when it was on crowdfunding. I played through the, the first wave and the second wave of the content and probably gave it, I don't know, 20 plus hours of time between those two, between those two versions of the game, diving into it and experiencing the game system and learning to love the game system and now I'm sitting here realizing that I have to relearn the game system because they've made changes to it since then and so I have to learn this game for a third time which does have me a drop like okay what am I going to do but I've also seen everyone enjoying their copies and it getting a large amount of praise this was a system that many people were skeptical of this is a system that people saw you know content creators holding their ship phase books and being like oh yeah sure that's a good thing that looks boring it looks tedious it doesn't look fun and then people got a lot of flack both Awakening Realms got flack as well as content creators got flack for praising this you know homework assignment and lo and behold it showed up and people like the homework assignment people enjoy the game and i am very much looking forward to diving into this game this is one of those times where i'm very glad that i play and stream games over on camp co-op where i play through various campaign games because this is going to give me the excuse or that is going to give me the excuse to, to dive back into isis vanguard properly and give it the time energy and attention it deserves this is a fantastic experience one that i believe is currently holding up and one that i don't know if i need the 550 dollars worth of content that is a different conversation the short answer is i probably don't but it is is one that I think overall will still hold this value for a long time when I eventually do get rid of it, if I eventually get rid of it, and for right now I'm happy to have it so I could eventually dive into this experience. Moving on, we have The Witcher Old World coming in at $550 again. This is coming to you from Go On Board, and this is one that I have no doubts or qualms about at all. Again, $550 is a different conversation. That's for the, the, the big box, the, 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 the shaded, and all these things, and every single add-on expansion you can possibly get for it. This is The Witcher Old World, and I loved my time with this game, limited as it was. And I'm excited to dive back into it with all the modules, with the expansion, with the solo mode. This game has a solo mode. I'm going to dive into the solo mode, and I'm going to dive into the cooperative mode, and I'm going to play it head-to-head, -head, and I just overall really enjoy what this game did, and the few complaints I had against the game were all addressed in the crowdfunding campaign. I say addressed with a caveat that I haven't actually played the things that they've addressed but I was like hey I want more interesting monsters and they're like here you go and I'm like I want more interesting card play and they're like here you go and like every complaint that I had about the system they had answers for them already prepped and ready to go in the campaign a few of the expansions don't necessarily compel me in terms of the narrative in terms of what they pitched it as and whether I care or not but I am happy to have the content and to explore it as I as I slowly dive into it again way too expensive you don't need it all I certainly don't need it all the base game would probably be plenty for as far as giving me the content I need but that said I like this game a lot and when I like something a lot, I am willing to spend money on it. And in the case of The Witcher Old World, I am very excited to have this show up. It, it's, it's, it's been too long. It's been too long, and I'm excited to have this one show up at my door. And then we have Chronicles of Jonagar coming in at $600. This is for both campaigns combined. This is the first time we're combining two campaigns. We're combining the original first time campaign and then the second one over on GameFound. A $600 total spent between the two of them. And Chronicles of Jonagar, Age of, Apoc Age of Darkness Apocalypse, is a game system that I don't yet know how I feel about because of the fact that I liked Chronicles of Jonagar quite a bit, but then I also put it off to the side when I learned that the Age of a Darkness expansion is going to also backwards bring you more of an immersive gameplay loop to the original campaign, which sounds amazing, and now I don't want to play the original campaign until this one shows up. 
this is a problem that's happened to me in many games where they're like, we're improving the original, and I'm like, I will wait patiently, I have plenty of games, there's no rush whatsoever. At some point, though, this will show up on my doorstep, and then there'll be a rush to see just how well does it hold up. I've really enjoyed what Chronicles Underguard does, I've really enjoyed the narrative system as far as both the both the core gameplay of what they do, as well as the just the vast variety of characters and how you can, uh, you know, level them up slowly but surely across, you know, uh, 20 plus missions. The fact that, you, you know, Chronicles Underguard leads straight, lead in, straight into Age of Darkness Apocalypse, so there's a lot of gameplay here, a lot of fun things, a lot of miniatures, a lot of gameplay, lots of characters, lots of uh, immersive narrative content, and again, that was heavily enhanced through Age of Darkness Apocalypse. For me, I think that $600 for this system, compared to the fact that there are many systems that I like that cost less than that for less money, definitely on the expensive side, and I don't know if this is a long-term keeper, but I know it's good enough that I want to give it the time and attention. It's just, at the end of the day, I have 40-plus, you know, campaign slash narrative experiences that I'm going through, and I have to pick and choose which ones will make the cut. This one I am currently happy with and we'll see how it tables, but it's a lot of money and a lot of game and my biggest complaint was the accessibility of how easy it was to pull out and table. So this one might eventually leave, like I think it, I, I don't know. Talking about it now and realizing how many other things I have, I'm kind of of the impression that it probably will eventually leave before I dive into all the content, but I also do want to properly give it a, sh a fair shot when it shows up. Like a fair, not a fair shot, I've already played it. I want to, I want to dive into it again when it shows up. So we'll see, we'll see what happens with this one. Ultimately, I'm going to try. I'm going to give it as much time as I possibly can because I did very much enjoy what Chronicles of Jornagar was doing. From there, we have an interesting and surprise one for $600 worth of skinny minis. This is may maybe one that you're not expecting, but this is skinny minis, which is not even a board game. These are a bunch of miniatures that are basic plastic acrylic standee miniatures that I decided to go like heavily all in on because I was like, you know what? I'm going to start giving these as little surprises to my kids, which was a great idea, except the fact that it's been like a year since I backed it and uh, I thought it would be showing up sooner and my kids are slowly aging out of just how much they care. Not that much. They'll still care. They'll still be excited. But basically, my kids love my games. They love playing through my games they love in general playing through the systems I, as systems that i have and at this point if you combine a bunch of skinny minis with some of those infinity dungeons from yanaro studios or whatever and between the two of them you're going to have a, a ton of gameplay content for my kids and they will appreciate that gameplay content or they better i spent enough money on it but overall the idea of handing out to them miniatures one at a time because this 600 dollars worth of skinny minis is like 800 miniatures worth of stuff i'm going to hand them out to them one at a time giving them little rewards of hey you know you can earn a miniature today you can earn a miniature tomorrow it's going to be two or three years years worth of miniature goodness being doled out one step at a time, and also minis that I don't care if they break, contrasted with my board games, when they fortunately do not break them often, but those few times they do, I do care when they break. They dropped one of my Marvel United Sentinels, and it com arm completely broke off. I was able to re-glue it, and you don't even know that it's gone, but, um... I'm still not the most pleased with that, but then again, I'm keeping Marvel United, so who really cares? But yeah, an absolute ton of miniatures, both, you know, nature-themed, and, 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 and medieval-themed, and dragon-themed, and owlbear-themed, and just an absolute ton war elephant-themed. This is just a ton of content for the skinny minis, and I spent a lot of money on it, basically for prizes for my kids, which we'll, they'll get eventually. And with that, we move on to the next one, which is another Awaken Realms title, Nemesis Lockdown. Coming in at $700 for Nemesis and Nemesis Lockdown, and the cats and the kings and all of that combined, I spent a lot of money on this system, and apparently Nemesis Retaliation is coming as well. Nemesis Retaliation is going to be coming, adding this, bumping this up to over the $1,000 range if you go all in it. I still haven't figured out what I'm doing about Retaliation. I need to play through more Lockdown. Yes, I'm aware that in a recent video I called it Nemesis Lockup, so sue me, I have lock up over there on the shelf, and I, it is what it is, I made a mistake, I'm sorry. But Nemesis Lockdown from Awakened Realms is a one that I do want to play very much. I want to play Nemesis Lockdown, I thought you to be more specific, I want to play Nemesis Lockdown and then get rid of Nemesis. That's my ideal situation. Nemesis as a system gives me enough stuff that I like, that I am compelled, and there's a reason it has stayed around, even though I've had some great, amazing plays, and then some plays that were only okay. And I want to play Lockdown, and I want it to be the experience that kind of closes that gap for me. I am curious as to whether it will or it won't, I just don't know, but I do plan on tabling it and finding out but I also need to just get a table then. There's so many games I need to get tabled. But this is a system that I definitely don't want to have $700 worth of the content for this. I cannot imagine that I will keep both of them. I think Nemesis will go and Lockdown will stay, and if Lockdown doesn't work for me, I may give Nemesis one more play and see, but ultimately, I when Nemesis is working, it is straight fire. But I've had I've had gameplays on Nemesis that were not fun for me, and that does take away from my experience with it. But overall, $700 worth of Nemesis Lockdown. Again, if you go all in on this stuff, if you get the kings, the cats, and the plushies, and the every single thing, 
thing. And by the way, you could have spent like $1,200 if you got like the painted miniatures and the extra, the inserts and all those things. You could have spent more money on these systems. Uh, $700 is what I chose to reasonably spend. No, no, it's not reasonable. Moving on to a system that I do very much enjoy. At $750, we have Teneris Adventures and plus Arena of the Contest. This is counting Arena of the Contest. This is counting Teneris Adventures and this is counting the RPG content. All together, I spent $750 on Teneris Adventures stuff and as one of my favorite games, I have no qualms. I'm totally fine with it. Is it more than any human being reasonably needs? Absolutely. Will I ever get through it all? Probably not. Do I enjoy the vast selection and variety of content I have in a game system that I thoroughly enjoy? Yes, yes I do. Very often I've described games as not being that dissimilar to having a collection of books that you're not reading. Sometimes if you love things, it's okay to own them and just kind of be immersed in them. Obviously, assuming you're doing so financially responsibly and all of that. But to me, Nemesis... To me, the Nemesis, uh, not the Nemesis, I don't know why I said that. To me, Teneris Adventures is a game system I love. And when I have a game system I love, I'm fine owning more content than I might possibly go through. And again, that's definitely true with Teneris Adventures. Between all the stuff I have and have coming, there's just too much content here. I've condensed like eight different boxes down to like five different boxes. Actually, I, can I condensed like... 14 boxes down to 5 boxes, but it's a game system that I'm thoroughly enjoying. I'm actively going through it right now, and I'm really enjoying it. You can expect my first impressions of Teneris Adventures probably going up soon. I just, between Dice Tower West and Travel and Pax East and all these things, I, I'm trying to find the time for all the content and the games. I'm playing all the games, but not necessarily the ones I want to play at the right time. Either way, Teneris Adventures, great game system, and I am okay with what I spent on this one. I am... It's a great game. I, I've loved this since it first came out. I traded for the original one, although I am counting the uh, price point of it when I do this whole video. So then moving on to the next one, we have Too Many Bones at $750 worth of content. Yes, you can spend more than that on, on, on Too Many Bones. In fact, the all-in on this campaign was, I believe, uh, $1,100 if you wanted to get everything over here. I think the reason I paid less than that is because, first of all, the content here has a bunch of extra things like the waterlogged chest and a bunch of promos that I don't have. And also, the Trove Chest went up in price. The original Trove Chest was cheaper before they're like, hey, we lost money on this and we have to charge more for it. So I've spent around $750 on Too Many Bones content. And again, when I say spent, that that means if I trade it for something, I try to count its value. But overall, my entire Too Many Bones collection, Trove Chest, and all content and all things, not counting promos, not counting waterlogged things, not counting the automaton of sale and all that, uh, the, I spent around $750 on this game system. And I, I love it. I Like, I adore it. However, whatever degree of, of interest I had in Terrace Adventures goes straight out the window when I'm comparing it to Too Many Bones. Too Many Bones was the number six game of all time, and I sometimes think that that is not high enough. I love the system of Too Many Bones, and I enjoy it so much. It is to, it's to date. It's still my favorite games from Chip 3 Games. I like nearly everything they put out. Nearly everything, not everything. And I like them to various degrees. But Too Many Bones simply is the best one. I, I've i played other games. I've played Cloud Spire, and I wonder about Cloud Spire. I still think Cloud Spire has potential to possibly match it, but I have to play it a lot more to get there. Uh, Burn Cycle is phenomenal, but it's not Too Many Bones. Uh, Hoplomachus Victorum has faded a bit for me as it's gotten a bit grindy. Still enjoy it a lot, but definitely not Too Many Bones. And I feel like I'm missing one. I'm missing one. I mean, Elder Scrolls is the newest one. I'm not talking about that one. 20 Strong is incredible as well. Elder Scrolls is incredible, but ultimately Too Many Bones is the best one in the system, and it's one that I will happily buy anything they ever put out for this game, even though I haven't played through half my gear locks. Is that irresponsible? Absolutely. See previous notes on owning things that I love when it's a game system that I love, and this is very much a game system that I love. Plus, have you read anything about, you know, who's the new the new ones? We have some of these new characters here. Where are they? Where's the new ones? Uh, Static Powers, Carcass. Carcass is like hanging these enemies from meat hooks as you try to figure out how to it, they're cool they're very cool i like too many bones and i'm happy to have spent seven well i'm not happy to have spent 750 dollars but i am happy to have all the stuff that comes with spending 750 dollars on a giant chest that by the way fun fact has damaged my dining room table because one time i put it down there and then i tried moving it and that was a mistake and my dining room table had scratches in it that i did eventually cover up with one of those like little stick things but that was fun warning to you that those of you who have a trove chest not necessarily the most table friendly on top of a nice polished wood but then we move to Marvel Zombies at $750. This is coming to you from Kaman, and I think it's worth it, but we'll find out. Then again, they just announced that they have Zombicide. Sorry, talking too fast there. Then again, they just announced that they have Zombicide White Death coming to your table, which means at this point, I have Black Death, I have Green Horror which I kind of mentally count together, but I don't know if I can get away with that with White Death as well. Counting three systems together seems like it's pushing it. And then I have Undead or Alive and I have Marvel Zombies. So I have entirely too much Zombicide content. And to be very clear, this $750 price point over here 
is just Marvel Zombies. It's not anything else added in. It's not other Zombicides in it. It's just Marvel Zombies going all in on this. But I really like Marvel Zombies, and I really like the Zombicide system. I've had so much fun playing through it, both myself as solo, playing with other players. It plays well at two, it plays well at three. My kids love the system. This plays well at like so many different ways for me, and the variety of content they have, and then the Marvel IP on top of it. I have no regrets yet. Well, maybe Galactus. Galactus is, to be very clear, I said this even when I backed it, Galactus is just purely... I mean, honestly, the only reason I justified it, justified Galactus, is because, hey, I'm a content creator, I'll unbox it, I'll do all that stuff, maybe I'll throw it in the back of my video somewhere. Where in the back of my videos? I don't know. It's not like I have room for it. Maybe I'll move one day. Maybe I'll move one day. That will be when I justify Galactus. Galactus is probably a mistake. Again, I'll, I'll justify it as a content creator, but Galactus is a mistake. Everything else, on the other hand, I have no regrets over at all. I like Marvel Zombies a lot, and more content is good for the most part. I say for the most part because I have so much medieval Zombicide that I'm not as excited about White Death as you might think I am. Will I probably back it? Probably. Will it also possibly be the thing that makes me get rid of all my medieval Zombicide? It's possible. I mean, I'm liking Marvel Zombies enough, and I'm liking Undead, or Ali uh, Undead and Alive enough that maybe... Although I would miss those wolves and those archers, so maybe not. I don't know. We'll see what happens with Undead, with Medieval Zombicide. That's not today's conversation. Today's conversation is around Marvel Zombies, and I'm happy to have all that stuff show up in my door when it does show up in my door. From there, we move up very quickly from $750 to $950, starting with Storm Sunder. Storm Sunder, Errors of Rune, which if you went for all three pledges, all three seasons and tiers, and you sun dropped it all, and you got all the extra miniatures for all the extra encounters, and you got all the stuff they offered you in the pledge manager, and then shipping and taxes and all those stuff, it's $950 for everything Storm Sunder. Feels like a mistake feels like a mistake. Now, I'm not saying it's a mistake. I am saying I am very interested in this game system, and I think the miniatures are amazing, and I've liked what Wild Descent have done, and I know that this game, for people who've covered the game when, they, when it was available, they had nothing but good things to say about it, and so I am 100% interested in Storm Sunder, and very, very happy possibly with what I spent in it, but I have to have it actually show up at some point and actually give it a shot and play it. I'm interested, I'm compelled, I like the I like the publisher, I like the miniatures, the story seems great, it just seems like a great system that I, like 300 hour campaign, will I ever go through that properly? I have no idea, but I'll start it. Again, I over on Camp Co-op, I use Camp Co-op as an excuse. I've, been play I've played 100 plus hours of Gloomhaven this year, so I am making progress on these games, slowly but surely. I finished Roleplay Adventures, that's not true, I almost finished Roleplay Adventures. I've been going through campaigns and diving into them more, but that does not mean that I'll get 300 hours of Storm Sunder done. I should start another channel where I play more campaign games. I don't know. I'll figure it out one step at a time, but Storm Sunder Errors of Rune, the good news is this isn't showing up anytime soon yet, so I don't know exactly when I'll have the problem having to play it. I don't know when it's actually showing up. I know it's delayed. I, Lord knows I like Lazy Squire. I like their games. I'm very interested in what they do, but um, they definitely, def they definitely push the, the envelope as far as how delayed their systems can be. So hoping for the best on Lazy Squire and Storm Sunder Errors of Rune, and very eagerly awaiting it to show up at my door. Sun dropped and everything, with all the fun stuff. That's going to be Storm Sunder Errors of Rune from Lazy Squire Games. A whole lot of money. This is my second, or tied for the, tied for first really, in terms of my most expensive game that I've spent. And this is all in one campaign. This is not even spread out across multiple campaigns. Which brings us to the very first one, which is spread out across three campaigns, around 900 $950 worth of Marvel, Marvel United as something that I've, I've spent around $950 total across three campaigns on Marvel United. And I have no regrets. None whatsoever. I have played this game a ton. I don't know. I mean, ton is relative. This is one of those fun things where it's like not always great to compare things because I've played Marvel United like 50 plus times, which at $950 total comes down to around $20, $20 per play, although of course I'm still playing it more, and I have all these miniatures, and my kids play with it all the time, they play with the, 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 them on the table just to have fun with them. Then again, Castles of Burgundy I spent like $50 on, and I've played that game like 70 times, so you know, not everything's equitable as far as that distribution of cost per play. That said, I have a lot of fun with Marvel United. You have a lot of miniature goodness, you have way more content than you ever need, and to be very clear, you can get what you need out of the Marvel United system without spending $950. You absolutely can. You can spend 100 maybe 200 and still get a ton of value from the system. And to be very clear as well, <clears throat> I need water. To be very clear as well, the $950 does count the multiverse content, which I haven't even had a chance to play because it hasn't shown up yet, so really the cost per play technically is a little bit better, only a little bit better, but either way, there's far too much content that I have 
far too much money has been spent on Marvel United, but I have played this game enough and used it enough and dive into it enough that I am totally fine with it. I do wish I painted stuff, because painting things would be cool, although it would take me, take me a lifetime to paint all these miniatures between Marvel United, between all the other games I have. At some point, I'll uh, quit content creation and just paint miniatures all day. That would be fun. Although I like content creation, so maybe not that much fun. Or I could do miniature painting and content creation, but I'd be distracted for that. I would not be that. I, I tend to get distracted if I'm doing things while doing content. I like to be doing content as opposed to, like, uh, painting, because I'd want to paint well, and I'd ignore the camera, and that wouldn't be fun. But maybe. Who knows? Either way, that is what we have over here. Marvel United coming in at the number one. Technically, Storm Center is the number one, because Storm Center is, like, one campaign, and Marvel United is, like, three campaigns. But either way, those two are tied for number one as the games that I've spent $950 on, which is absolutely insane. I still remember the first time, the very first time I got pulled into Kickstarters, into crowdfunding, was with Cthulhu Death May Die from Come On. It's not the first crowdfunding campaign I backed, but it's the first one where I felt myself being sucked into a, a journey more than simply a product. And to that end, I remember when they were like, hey, it's $150, and then boom, here's a $20 optional buy, and I was like, I already thought $150 was a lot, and now you're throwing an additional $20 optional buy my way, now you're just pushing it. And then I reluctantly backed that optional buy and had no regrets, because Cthulhu Death May Die is one of my favorite games of all time. It's my second favorite game of all time as of last year, and so no really regrets there, but I remember, my point is that I remember when $100 or $150 was a lot in crowdfunding, and it should be a lot. Games are expensive. And we have all these big box campaigns. If you do go ahead and watch that Patreon video, the numbers start at 350 Because $300 is no longer enough to even break the top 24 most expensive campaigns I've backed. Now again, I do back things with the justification and the leeway that I am a content creator. I have more room for that. But I backed a lot of these even before then. Being a content creator just means I know more about more what's out, out there. When before I was like, you know, more in the dark. Some of these campaigns are campaigns I would never have heard of or backed if I wasn't a content creator. So there is that that trade-off there. But anyways, that, for those who asked, those are the 12 most expensive campaigns that I have backed. When you combine them all together, it's a lot of money spent. Most of the games I back are not that expensive. But when you add it all up across four or five years of backing games, there's definitely some that make me question if I'm, if I really should evaluate my all-in policy. But that's, that's a video for another day. In any case, until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and I hope you have a good one.